It's always a great day at Beaver Dam Baptist Church when we can start off our worship service with a baptism, with a focus on being a great commission church. And so this morning I want to introduce to you my son Hayden Guerrero. A couple of weeks ago, Hayden made the very important decision to follow Jesus. I shared with you last week, uh, oftentimes he would, he would come sing baptism and he would inquire about baptism, wanting to know more about it and wanting to eventually take that step. We wanted to be very careful as parents to not push that and to not do that um, maturely. So that language changed a couple of weeks ago from wanting to be baptized to wanting to have Jesus in his life. And we contribute many things to that. Sunday school class that he's in, Good News Club that he attended this last year, um, and being a part of the church. Hayden, are you trusting in Jesus Christ alone today for your salvation? And do you recognize that this is the church? I baptize you, then, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Death, alive. Father God, we are so thankful for your grace, for your mercy, Lord, for your hand, God, that is upon this young man. And Lord, we lift Hayden up to you this morning. We pray for his discipleship. We pray for how you are going to use him, for your will for his life. We pray, Lord, that as a congregation, that we would come alongside Hayden and that we would play the role that you have intended us to play in his Christian education, in his discipleship, Lord, and in how you want to use this young man for your glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our call, our call to worship this morning is my lighthouse and your directors be these children. <laughs> Please stand. Silence, you won't let go in the question. 
skins your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are peace in my trouble sea world You are peace in my trouble sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness Counter, counterpart up here. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Children's Sunday. Children shall be taught by the Lord it and great shall be the peace of your children. That's Isaiah 54, 13. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, it is so sweet to watch these children up here. Just the group continues to grow, um, and, and they're just so, so good and so into what they're doing. It's takes a lot of courage to get up there and sing and dance in front of a, a room of people. So um, we're just really proud of them and, and proud that our children get to be a part of this as well. Um, this morning we do want to um, 
just call attention to um, a new addition to the service today. We have Allie Ann back there for her first Beaver Dam service today. Um, and so we're just happy that Haley and Alex and Allie Ann are here. And um, I think I see Grandpa back there, grinning too. I think he gets plenty of, of cuddles and nap times with her as well from, from what we see. So we're happy that she's here, you guys. And she seems to be just so sweet and cuddly. And, I'm sure not any pink in her closet at all, but <laughs> we are happy that she's here. Um, we just um, want to just call attention to a few things going on in the church. This Thursday, June 27th, we do have our women's group, The Seekers. Um, it is in the Fellowship Hall beginning at 7 a.m. It is a one-hour Bible study once a month, the last Thursday of every month. Um, we call it young women, but, but if you feel led, please come and, and dig into the word. It's uh, we're happy to have you, happy to be there. I've said this before, it's very casual. So if you're coming home from work and you're like me and still in your scrubs or in leggings or whatever it is, please don't feel like you, you can't come or you know, you're just been doing anything to where, where you have to, have to come looking like your Sunday best. It's very casual and I just really want to encourage you to come and, and dig into the word with us. A um, couple things just to highlight in the bulletin as well is the Beatitude House is still looking for donations. There is a, a slip in your bulletin that explains what they're looking for, what they need. The church is really pushing for this through the end of June. So if you could please bring those donations. And then also Vacation Bible School needs lots of volunteers. We have all these children for a reason um, and it takes a lot to corral them. Um, it can't just be, you know, one adult in a class of 20 kids, and you don't want kids to not come or to not get the attention or the, the study that they deserve out here. So please make it a point to sign up. I know you kind of think, oh, I've done that. I've done it so many years. I've been there, done that. Um, God used Abraham and Sarah at 100. Um, you are not too old to do it. You have not been there and done that. We are still being called every day to use, be used and, and to be a vessel for Christ. You do not know. Um, you might say one thing to a child that will change their life that week. Um, and God might be pulling at you just to, to be that person and be in that role. They might see something in you that that really just speaks to them. And so I don't want you to feel like, you know, well, I'll just see if I can just, you know, help set up or take down. Well, you can set up and take down because that's a lot of fun too. But, um, but please be encouraged to sign up and, and be in prayer for that. And even if you maybe don't know exactly where you want to sign up, um, then just, just, just write down, float, I'll help. I'll help do whatever you guys need. Um, we have all of these kids and they are on fire for Christ right now. And, and this is where they get excited. Vacation Bible School is so much fun. Um, they love it. They look forward to it. My kids are singing the songs from two years ago at Bible School, still in the house. Um, and so it's something that really uh, they carry with them. And so I don't want you to, to, to maybe feel burnout or, or whatever that may be. Um, just, you know, suck it up for one week. And, and just really please just sign up and help for that because it, it can change a child's life. Um, and, and that might be your mission on this earth, is to, for, to reach to that one kid. Um, so, so put aside anything else you have going on and really sign up for, for Bible school. I really want to encourage that. Um, the flowers are given to the glory of God by Pam and Keith Pollard in re recon <coughs> recognition, recognition of their 39th anniversary, yesterday, June 22nd. Happy anniversary. Um, and so we will, uh, any other announcements or anything we didn't hit? So we will go to the Lord in prayer. Um, and um, just again, make sure you, you offer some prayer for these kids. We're so thankful for them. They are so sweet and so good. and. And their leaders and, and the people that dedicate as much time as they have to them. Um, we're just so thankful for that. Um, so we will go to the Lord in prayer. Mr. Donald, do you mind praying for us? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. For, Lord, for this Sunday, whenever we allow the children to be part of our worship hour. We're grateful for each and every one of them, for their parents. who see the need to bring them to church, for the workers who 
allow themselves to be used in this way for Savannah and for her willingness to serve as our children's ministry coordinator. We, we recognize that there are many volunteers behind the scenes who, who work in these areas. And we pray for the efforts that will happen during our, sun, our vacation Bible school and, and the memories that we have in the Bible school during our younger years. We, we know that it's something that makes a spiritual difference in the lives of children. We prepare for that. Our prayer is that you would send us many workers to, to make themselves available during that week. We're grateful, Lord, for your many blessings. We're, we're happy with, uh, we've seen last uh, Sunday with the uh, baby dedications that we have. And we have at the end with us with, for the first Sunday today. We're grateful for the children that you send to us, but we also recognize that it's our responsibility. As we've already heard, with Hayden to live out before him and before them a life that will show them the love of Christ. It will be an example to them of how we should live in serving you and allowing ourselves to be used by you each and every day for your glory and for your honor. We recognize that we have needs that there are sick and suffering among us and we lift up each and every one of them, ask your blessings upon them. We're grateful for those that you have healed and that those prayer concerns that you have answered, and we are grateful for that. We praise you for your healing and your powerful touch. We also recognize that as we drive down the road, we see the lack of rain, and we pray that you would send rain to our community and to our area. And we, we know that uh, the farmers and even those of us in our homes have, have uh, depended upon the rain. And we pray for those situations. We pray that you would send rain, and we know that you send it when it is your time. But our prayer is that you would give us relief from, from the heat and from the dry weather. You send rain upon our crops and upon our homes. We pray now for this worship hour. For the Lord, as uh, Pastor Josh comes, to, uh, to remind us that uh, we can look to children for leadership and encouragement and excitement. And we're excited as we watch young children sing this morning that uh, they're in a hip and a hip. They, they just demonstrate the love that they have for you. We would ask that you would just bless Pastor Josh if he comes and he shares what you laid on his heart. And may our hearts and minds be open and use it to glorify you in the days to come. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise Him is Deep Cries Out, and again, we will be led by our children's choir.
been coming to Beaverdam Baptist Church since I was four years old. I have always loved learning about the Bible. I have done Bible studies at night with my parents. I have attended many vacation Bible schools. I attended Good News Club at my school. I am also involved in Sunday school and GAs on Wednesday. Last year at Camp Caswell, I felt something happened to me. I started to accept Jesus into my heart. At VBS last year, I had many questions about salvation, and I even met with Pastor Josh and my parents to ask. I asked many questions at Good News Club this year, and there were many times I thought I was ready to accept Jesus, but being I am only 10, I not only had to believe in myself, but I also had to prove to my parents that I was ready. It wasn't until this past February that I knew and my parents knew I was ready. I asked to sing a solo at church. I love to sing and that's a big part of my testimony. I knew what song I wanted to sing and I told my mom to ask Pastor Josh if I could sing on Women's Sunday. He never says no to me, so I already knew I was going to sing. <laughs> my mom said yes, but I had to do some Bible stu studies and prove why that song spoke to me. Each day I would sing to practice and my mom and I would read verses. That had the same meaning in the Bible. I felt that God was working in me and that is when my parents also saw growth in me too. On Women's Sunday, after I sang, my mom said something spoke to her and told her I was ready. She and my dad gave me the go-ahead to come before the church. Being that I am just a kid and I still sin, I know now that I can ask Jesus for forgiveness. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And John 10, 11 says, Jesus willingly laid down his life for our sins so that we can gain eternal life. Our offer for him is something for thee. The words are on the screen if you prefer a hymnal. Um, it's 607. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse.
have given to us as we know give a portion back to you. Amen. I'm not a child, even though this is, well, I am a child. I'm a child of God. Um, and being a child of God, there's one thing that we truly understand, is that we are not worthy of Christ. And we have great worth because of Christ. The worthy died for the unworthy. And that doesn't seem fair. But that, dear children, is grace. The song is called, My Worth is Not in What I Own. My worth is not in what I own, not in the strength of flesh and bone, but in the costly wounds of love at the cross. My worth is not in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame, but in the blood of Christ that flowed at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in soul is satisfied in him alone. 
my worth and my unworthiness. My value fixed, my ransom paid at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him, no other, my soul is Before we go into the message this morning, I want us, where we are, to stop and to pray for rain. Um, we are in just a, seems like a desperate situation with our farmers and with the crops. And so if we could just take a moment, and as I, as I pray out loud, if you will just have a moment of prayer and just ask the Lord... Um, obviously for His will, but ask the Lord to provide the rain that only, only He can bring. And so let's have just a moment of prayer this morning. Let's just bow our heads for a moment, and then I will, I'll be glad to pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before You this morning. And Lord, we we ask for that which You can only give us. We ask, Lord, for, for rain for this dry season. We pray for the farmers. We pray for the crops. We pray, Lord, for Your plan. And God, we we ask for Your will to be done in this. We know, Lord, that You have a a sovereign plan. And God, we just pray that we would come before You, before Your throne, and trust in You, Lord, to supply the need of moisture, the need of rain. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Well, this morning I want to encourage you to take your copy of God's Word and turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Haven't the children done a wonderful job this morning? It can only go downhill from here. 
okay? Let me just encourage you. It can only go downhill from here. And so we're going to look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, actually through verse 16, but our main focus is going to be on the 12th verse. There are leadership principles that the young can teach us, that we can learn from those in their youth. And let me just set the tenor and the tone this morning. We just, we just talked about rain. We just talked about the, the need for praying for this. I heard about another community, farming community, that was in the same situation. And there was going to be this big prayer meeting that was going to happen. And so this farmer grabbed his little boy, put him in the pickup truck, and they were heading on down to the church, and all the farmers were going to gather around, and they were going to pray, and they were going to ask God to bring this rain that they so desperately needed. And on the way to the church, the boy began to make some keen observations. He began to realize that his father did not have an umbrella. He began to realize his father did not have his rain boots, his rain hat, his raincoat. And he asked his father, aren't we going to a prayer meeting to pray for rain? Yes, son, that's right. He said, where's your umbrella? Where's your rain boots? Where's your rain hat? In other words... If we're going to pray and we're going to come before the throne of God and we're going to ask God to supply a need that we can't supply ourselves, do we really believe God can really do what we're asking Him to do? What a leadership lesson that dad learned on that day. Whenever we pray, we need to pray believing it can happen. We need to pray already assuming God's going to do it. We need to pray not wavering like the waters and the wind, but we need to pray secure and confident in our God that God can do and is able to do exactly what we are pleading and asking and imploring the Lord to do. We often learn leadership lessons and principles from our children, from young people that have a hunger and a thirst for God. Look with me at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we look beginning in verse 12 and concluding in verse 16. The Apostle Paul writes to young Timothy, Don't let anyone despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Watch verse 13. Until I come, give your attention to public reading, exhortation, and teaching. Don't neglect the gift that is in you. It was given to you through prophecy, with the laying on of hands, by the counsel of elders. Practice these things. Be committed to them so that your progress may be evident to all. Pay close attention to your life. And your teaching, preserve in these things. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. The most powerful leadership tool, template, aid that we possibly have is an exemplary life. The great Puritan writer Thomas Brooks put it this way, the most powerful, 
lesson we have, the most powerful rhetoric we have is example. Martin Luther once said, in preaching a funeral for a pastor friend of his, the things that we preach, he lived. I want you to see this morning that the one thing that is driving this passage, the one thing that we can latch on to this morning is that word example. That we are to be an example. Children, sometimes you may feel you're not taken seriously. Sometimes you may feel that adults look at you and, and think, well, you're just a child. You need to listen to me. You need to listen to us. You need to do what we say. Uh, you almost don't even have a role in, in life. You just do what we tell you to do. You know what Paul's message is to Timothy here? His message is don't let anyone despise, look down on, discount your youth. But instead, be an example. If I could put it another way, make everybody around you forget your age. Forget how old you are. Forget you're a child. Forget you're a youth. Forget you're young. And be an example of Christ before a watching world. You could probably write down and you could probably list, children, many things you're not old enough to do. Many responsibilities you don't have yet. Many ways you're not taken seriously. Many things that you're not allowed to do. But the one thing that's being taught here, the one thing that's being asked here, the one thing that's being implored here is that we, no matter our age, we would be an example to other believers in Christ. You know, I didn't even think about this example just till just now, but standing there in the back and was listening to Emmy's testimony. And I can remember that um, Emmy came forward on Baptist Women's Day, and um, I remember she made that public that day that she wanted to follow Christ. She wanted to be part of God's family. She wanted to trust Jesus with her very life. I remember meeting with mom and dad and her and I remember baptizing her. Then I remember somebody else in the church that, that I had asked about baptism and we had talked about baptism and there was just kind of a, a fear there. And I remember that God used Emmy to help that person have the courage to also want to walk down that scary aisle and want to come before all of you and, and want to engage in, in baptism after that person had followed Christ. You are an example. God uses children all the time. I have heard example after example after example after example of families that didn't go to church. Families that didn't regularly make worship a priority and it was the child that wanted to come to church. It was the child that said, why don't we go to church? It was the child that said, my, my friends go to church. Mom, Dad, why don't we go to church? Maybe there's some here even today that would say, I'm here, I'm back in worship, I'm back here on a consistent, regular basis because of my child. Because my child brought me back. Because the Lord used my child to make worship a priority in my life once again. We may think on the surface, children don't have a leadership responsibility, 
but look at how God uses children. Now, think about it for just a moment. You remember the story? Jesus is, is there, and the children are coming to Jesus, and the disciples start thinking, we don't want these children wasting our Lord's time. We don't want these children taking up the time. And Jesus rebukes the disciples. Suffer not to let the little children come to me. Daniel, was he an old man when he was besieged and he was taken and dropped off in Babylon? Oh, we're told he was probably 12 years old. David, when he stood against Goliath, and he was encouraged to use Goliath's armor, instead, as a young man, he said, I'm going to trust. You can search through the Bible and you can find many examples of young people, sometimes no more than 12 years old, that God used, that God led, and that God did miraculous things through. For the purpose of context this morning, we're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, we don't know the exact age of Timothy. I have read commentators that have said 30. I've read commentators that have said 22. I don't know where they got that number from, but I, I've read commentators that have said somewhere between 25 and 30. All we know is that Timothy was a young man. He was a young pastor in Ephesus. And as he stood before the congregation, and as he led the congregation, and as he pastored the congregation, and as he taught the congregation, there were some that looked at him as if he was just this, this young guy. This, this young pastor. This young man that didn't have near the wisdom of the congregation didn't have near the intellect of the congregation, that, that didn't have enough life experience to really be taken seriously. You see, if we don't read the text carefully, we kind of get the wrong idea. If you go back to verse 12, Paul says, don't let anyone despise your youth, but... Set an example. Some translations say, but become an example. The, the become in the passage, or the set in the passage, it's really an imperative verb that some would look at and say, well, he wasn't being an example. Uh, he was not doing his job. He was not uh, living out that character of Christ he was not performing this before the congregation and so he needed to make a turn and he needed to become an example but that is not what that imperative verb means it actually means that Timothy was being all of those things it actually means that Timothy was setting the example it actually means that Timothy was living it out before the congregation and what Paul's Words of wisdom are, keep on keeping on. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on setting the example. Keep on being the example. Keep on focusing on the ministry. Keep on focusing on why I have you here. Why the Lord has called you to Ephesus. Why the Lord has called you to be a part of the church. Now, I can relate to Timothy pretty well. I became a pastor when I was 26 years old. I've always had deacons that were, maybe I shouldn't say older than me, maybe just wiser, right? Wiser with years. Always been the young guy. Now, imagine a 26-year-old that just got into ministry. He's, 
He's leading, and he's coming up with ideas, and he's wanting to do things, he's wanting to try things, and he's wanting to do things that we've never done before, try things we've never tried before, asking the church to do things that we're just not used to. Oh, this 26-year-old, he's going to kill our church, he's going to bust our church wide open, he's going to ruin our church, he's going to run everybody off. We've got to be careful with this guy. Face that my whole ministry. Timothy can't help his age. I even had one person say in one of my churches, well, I'd I'd like Josh, but he's just a little too young. He's just a little too young. What can I do? I I can't add numbers on to my age, right? You can only be who you are. Timothy is facing a people that looked at him as just a young, wet-behind-the-ears guy. And Paul's advice to him, Paul's counsel to him is, Don't focus on your youth. Don't focus on the wisdom you don't have. Don't focus on people that are going to look down upon your youth. But instead, be an example. Now, how is this to happen? Children, how can you be an example? How can you teach your parents? How can you teach your grandparents? How can you teach other believers that are older than you, that have been in the church longer than you, that have been alive longer than you, that have been in Christ longer than you? How can you be a blessing? How can you set the example? How can you do that? Well, thank goodness Paul has given us five ways we can do that. Let's look at them quickly this morning. Number one, he says, in speech. This is common talk. This is conversation between two people. This is any form of verbal expression that our speech ought to glorify the Lord. Our speech ought to make much of Jesus. Our speech ought to be pleasing to the Lord and our speech ought to edify others. You know, I could point you to um, Ephesians 5, 4, and I could point you to, uh, or I could point you to Colossians 3, 8, and could show you uh, explicitly that while Paul is talking about basic speech and basic communication, he's also talking about watch the filthy talk, watch the crude joke. Watch the things that do not glorify the Lord. He's also talking about arguments here. You know what? we got to be careful that we don't engage ourselves in silly myths, in silly arguments, in silly ways. I believe if, if Paul was writing this letter today, he would most certainly include social media. We need to watch what we're putting on social media. Watch what we're saying. Watch what... We're arguing about, I see people all the time on Facebook arguing about some kind of theological point. And everybody is a Bible scholar. Everybody has a PhD. Everybody's right. And even if they are right in in the way they argue and in the way they talk about their point, it's quite obvious we need to watch our our speech children. As, uh, As you set the example... Set the example of talking as if you are talking to Christ. Number two, conduct. How we live, how we conduct ourselves, our behavior, our character, how we act, our basic daily living ought to reveal the God and Lord of our hearts. You know, it's easy to come into the church and to be together and to be a part of Sunday school and to be a part of worship. What's difficult is to live outside of these walls. To live before a watching world. To live before a world where we get aggravated, we get agitated, we get frustrated. And how our conduct speaks to who we represent. 
We say we represent Christ. We talk about representing Christ. What does our conduct really look like? Who are we when nobody's watching? Who are we when we're not at church? Who are we when we're on the ball field? Who are we when we're wherever we are? How, what does our conduct say, right? Set an example in your speech. Set an example in your conduct. Set an example in love. Paul's talking about loving other believers, but he's also talking about loving your neighbor, and he's talking about loving those who don't know Christ. We ought to look at every situation and every person we come in contact with as a future person that needs to hear the gospel. And, you know, if we're not careful, we're not careful, our conduct and our speech will turn people off from hearing about the love of Christ that dwells in us. Number four, faith. This is more than just Faith that leads to salvation. That, of course, applies here. But remember, the context is believers. The context is the church. The context is the pastor, Timothy, setting an example before the church. So the context is to have faith and trust in God's Word to lead him, even when things don't make sense. Even when times are tough. Even when things are hard. Even when people are looking down on you because of your youth, because of your fact of being young, because you're a child. Have the faith to trust God when things aren't going our way. Think about that word faith just for a moment here this morning. And think about how in trust with God, in the Lordship of of Christ how we are maybe in the only thing we're allowed to do the only thing we're able to do in faith we are trusting God with what he has entrusted us with to be an example before other people last thing he mentions here purity holiness You know, our world has a way of doing what they do. They have a way of acting like what they are, lost. They have a way of acting like the culture, acting like pagans. But to us who follow Christ, to us who have been remarkably saved, To us who have had our hearts regenerated and we are alive and we are new in Christ, there is a holiness and there is a purity that we are to live before a watching world. I go back to that word character. Character is not doing what is right when everybody's watching. Character is doing what is right when nobody is watching. When nobody's going to know, nobody's going to see, who's going to see you do that? We do the right thing because it's the right thing. We do what the Bible teaches because we are under the Lordship of Christ. We are sold out to the Word. And we have turned our backs on the world and we want to be like Christ. Children, you can set an example in these ways before a watching world. I remember last year I heard about a youth in his school who started a Bible club. He started a a club of his peers that would get together, I think, at lunch. And they would pray together and they would study the Word together and they would hold each other accountable. And they had this club. They didn't wait They didn't ask a pastor to come in or a parent to come in. They took it upon themselves to want to see Christ change their school. Children, you can set the example. Now, just for a moment, look with me at uh, at verse 13. Look at what he says for Timothy to focus on. 
until I come. Give your attention to public reading, exhortation, teaching. Don't neglect the gift that is in you. It was given to you through prophecy, the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Practice these things. Be committed to them so that your progress may be evident to all. Don't focus on the things you can't change. Don't focus on the limitations that are assigned to you. Don't focus on the opportunities you don't have, but instead remember these things. Instead, focus on these things. Instead, live out these things. Instead, keep on being the example of Christ that you are. Make everybody around you forget your age. And what they see is not how old you are, but what they see is you are an example for Christ. I close with this. A dad was tucking his son in and he was reading him the devotion and he was sharing the gospel with him yet again and he was talking about asking Jesus to come into his heart. That one day, you understand, you're going to ask Jesus to come into your heart and save you. This little boy, as little boys will do, had pictured this 33-year-old, maybe six-foot Jesus. And he began to think in his mind, if I ask Jesus to come into my little heart, he asked his dad, isn't he going to stick out? And his dad replied back to him as the devotion is coming to a close, son, that's the point. Walk around letting Jesus stick out. Out. I pray for this congregation. I pray for myself as a, as a dad. I pray for all of our children that as we walk around and as we do our day, let Jesus stick out and let everybody see Jesus in our life and not us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, so thankful, Lord, for the children of this church. I agree with Brooke. You have stirred them, Lord. They're on fire for You. They love singing Bible songs. They love coming to church. They love being a part of Sunday school. They love vacation Bible school. They love Your Word. They love Good News Club. Every opportunity to be a part of where You are is where they want to be. God, I just pray that You would just pour gas on this fire. I pray, Lord, that You would just continue to lead them, continue to draw them, continue to give them and feed them that passion, Lord, that they have. And God, I pray Your blessings on all of our children, that Your will would be done in their lives, Lord, as they grow up and as they move from phase to phase, Lord, what would be hotter than an emerald, Lord, would be their relationship with you in Jesus. Lord, I pray for our children that have not yet understood and not yet made a decision to follow Jesus, have not placed under His Lordship yet. I pray, God, that you would use this church, Lord, to make the Gospel clear. I pray, God, that they would come to faith in Jesus. And I pray that we would do everything we can, Lord, coming alongside the parents to disciple them, Lord, and to mature them in the faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, if there is something in this message that has spoken to you, something maybe the the children did that has spoken to you today. You want to come and spend some time on the altar. You have a need you want to pray for. There's some reason, something God is doing in your heart. Then I invite you to come and respond to what God is doing. Let us stand. Let us sing what Miss Faith has chosen.
hymn of invitation is Speak to My Heart. As, we're, as we close our time of worship, as we get ready to have a word of prayer and then end with, uh, with singing. Didn't the children do a marvelous job ministering to us today? Amen. <laughs> let, us, let us focus on being an example for those five ways that, that Paul mentions in the text. Let us be a church that shows Jesus outside of the walls of this place. Every Baptist a missionary. Now, one quick announcement before we close. Uh, next Sunday at 4.30, we're going to have a vacation Bible school meeting in the fellowship hall. Okay? 4.30 next Sunday, vacation Bible school meeting for all the teachers and for all the helpers, and anybody that has a question, and anybody that wants to be a part of Bible school, please come to that meeting. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be announced again next week, but I wanted to go ahead and, uh, and share that with you this morning and just uh, prepare you for that, that meeting that's going to come as we, um, as we talk about Bible school and we think about Bible school. Also, this coming Wednesday night, we will have a very brief business meeting where we're going to vote on um, we're going to vote on our our Sunday school director for the upcoming year. Okay, so just want to let everybody know we're going to have that that business meeting Wednesday night. And, and I tell you, Caroline is so happy that, that uh, I don't even know if she's so happy about that director. So, <laughs> um, well, let us close in a word of prayer. Go into the song, dear Heavenly Father God. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for our children, God. We. We thank you, Lord, for how you're using them here at Beaver Dam. And Lord, we are grateful for your grace and your mercy. Lord, help us, God, to leave today being an example, Lord, to those in the community, but, to, but more importantly, God, to those believers around us, that we would be an example to one another, that our young people, Lord, would be an example to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.